The United States has no official language, but the two most common languages are English and... Wait, what? The United States have no official language? I don't believe it. Wait, what about English? Okay, this is a crazy video. <laughs> What's up my friend there? My name is André and I'll be reacting to Canada and the United States compared. But before I go into that, can I ask you for one thing? If you can leave a like on this video, thank you so much for that my friend. This is the best way to show support. If you can subscribe, oh man, in that case, well, forget about it. You make my day. Have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description. I know a bit about the United States, but very little about Canada, so this will be interesting. This video is sponsored in part by Curiosity Stream. Canada hmm. and the United States of America, the two biggest countries in North America. We coexist together because we're all Canadian. We're part of Canada and we're bonding together against the common enemy, the United States. <laughs> what? What a horrible country! <laughs> Wait, sorry, I know he's a comedian, but... Uh, and I say this because I really believe it. America seems such an amazing place and the people I've been interacting online, I'm aware, <laughs> to be honest, but uh, you guys are amazing. I, I, I mean this from my heart, you know, um, so I know he's a comedian, but I don't get it. But th there is also this stereotype, right, that Canadians are amazing people. Not amazing people, they are very friendly, be better saying. Uh, do you guys believe that's true, by the way? <laughs> or is this just a stereotype? I live there now. They're the most un-Canadian people you will ever meet. Oh boy, okay. Nah, actually, both have a lot in common. Whoa, are we really gonna do this? Okay, let's do this. Both have very close cultural and economic ties. Mm. So actually, both are two of the biggest countries in the world. Canada is slightly bigger than the United States. Both share the world's longest border between two countries. The oh, I was not aware of this. This is the longest border. Okay, actually makes sense that then I'm thinking, but I, I was not aware. Border stretches 5,525 oh, miles. miles, or I mean, 8,891 <laughs> kilometers. Okay, that, that was amazing. Thank God you're yeah, putting that on the video, because miles, I'm going to be honest, my friends, uh, that's speaking Japanese to me. Yeah, while Canada has officially adopted the metric system as a whole, the United States is only one of three countries in the entire world oh, that well. hasn't. That said, plenty of Canadians don't always use the metric system to measure stuff, and plenty of Americans do often use the metric system. Anyway, okay. let's stick with more similarities first, okay? Both are two of the wealthiest, most developed countries in the world. Immigrants have flocked to both countries for economic opportunity for centuries, which is why major cities in both are some of the most ethnically diverse in the world. Both have mixed economies and have a progressive tax system on income. However, okay. Canadians definitely pay higher taxes overall. Oh, lots hmm. of trading be going on between the two. The United States is Canada's largest trading partner, and Canada is consistently a top three trading partner for the United States. Both are in NATO and have historically fought as allies in wars. Both have lots of natural resources. Uh, Both have a wide variety of... Okay, so I say this a couple of times. I believe America is probably the most beautiful country in the world. But Canada is probably also quite beautiful, right, my friends? I, I, I should react to a couple of Canada stuff. Not sure if you guys will be interesting or interested or not. But um, I feel like Canada is also... I think those two countries are, are amazing. I, I also like Canada quite, quite a lot. I prefer America because it ended up influencing me a bit more growing up, as, as you can imagine. And the thing about uh, higher taxes in Canada, uh, this is me making an assumption, but maybe because they have um, health care, right, for, for everyone for free. I'm assuming. I, I, I don't know this uh, for sure. So they pay a bit more, they get uh, it's normal, right? climates and rainfall patterns. Both are democratic. Specifically, the United States is a democratic republic and Canada is a parliamentary democracy and constitutional monarchy. Both are growing at the same rate. Residents mm. of both generally like their space. Indeed, everything is more spread out in both countries. Both have mostly the same holidays. Uh, yeah, they both. Oh, they, they have Thanksgiving also. 
oh, I was not aware of this. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm loving this video. I'm just two minutes in. I hope you also are, are enjoying the video, but uh, I was not aware of this. This is fascinating. I really thought can, uh, the Thanksgiving Day was something unique to, to Americans. Okay. Back. Both have mostly the same holidays. Uh, yeah, they both celebrate Thanksgiving, but of course not on the same day. Americans celebrated on the fourth Thursday of November. Canadians celebrated on the second Monday of October. This is partially because Americans associate the holiday more with the pilgrims coming over, mm -hmm. while Canadians associate it more with the harvest festival in general. Hey, you know what? Let's get into hey. some history. But before we get into that, here's a word from our sponsor. Well, let's see it, I guess. <laughs> oh, me? Oh, I guess I'm the one who is telling you about okay. this video sponsor because that's how it usually is. Yeah, so this video is... I honestly thought he was about to say there is no sponsor. But there is. Sponsored by Curiosity Stream, the best place to stream educational content on the interwebs. Curiosity Stream has thousands of streamable documentaries and nonfiction, award winning exclusive TV shows on topics like history, nature, okay. science, food, technology, travel, and more. With more than 35 collections of curated programs handpicked by their experts, stream to any device, anytime. I recommend the series American Icons to start off with. Try it out by visiting the link on the screen and in the description of this video. Use code Mr. Beat to sign up and and get it for just $14.99 for the whole year. Thanks to Curiosity Stream. So my friends, I will say it one more time. I never skip the, the ad since I'm reacting. I think it's fair for me to, to also watch the ad. But you can skip it, of course for sponsoring this video and for the next part of this video my friend mr betts from the channel drawn of history told me that he just turned me into a cartoon if i jumped into the computer let's try this out shall we <laughs> okay. okay then let's do this while the earliest humans in what would later become both countries had settled nearly all of North America by 12,000 years ago. The Norse came to North America, maybe as far south as modern day United States, but certainly modern day Canada around 1,000 years ago. Throughout the 1500s, European explorers came searching for riches and to take over and convert indigenous peoples to their religion. The big three countries to explore, conquest, convert, and colonize were Spain, England, and France. The Dutch and Swedes also had small claims as well, and the Russians out west later on. Alt so if you guys, I guess you guys are aware, but PewDiePie is, is from Sweden. Ultimately, future Canada and a big chunk of the future United States would be fought over by the British and French, while the Spanish held on to claims for another big chunk of the future United States up into future Canada. By the early 1700s, around a few thousand Spanish, 16,000 French, and 300,000 English settlers lived in modern-day United States and Canada. That alone should tell you the direction the future would go. But first, a few wars between France and Britain. The biggest one, the Seven Years' War, well, specifically the French and Indian War, led to Britain taking over all previously held French territory in mainland North America. Britain was feeling pretty good about themselves until 13 of its colonies decided to all up and declare independence a few years after this. Today, okay. Americans celebrate July 4th, 1776 as their country's birthday, as that was the day the Second Continental Congress adopted the Declaration of Independence. After the American War of Independence, Britain lost most of its North American colonies, but it did hold on to future Canada. Many of the loyalists during that war, or folks who wanted to stay loyal to Britain, ended up fleeing the United States to future Canada. The United States was truly an experiment. It was the first government that went all in for the Enlightenment ideals of liberalism and republicanism. Completely re And uh, thank God for that, because we kind of need it.
rejecting royalty and the aristocracy, while calling for prioritizing the protection of natural rights. It was the first major group of colonies to successfully revolt against colonial rule and inspire mm. the rest of the world. Meanwhile, in 1791, Britain established Upper Canada and Lower Canada. Lower Canada still had a predominantly French population. Also, by that time, there were the colonies of Nova Scotia and... Okay, so... This, I would say, I was more or less aware. There is a lot of influence, uh, of uh, a lot of French influence in Canada. Also in America, right? I believe Louisiana, for example, have a lot of uh, French uh, influence for logic reasons. But that probably is even bigger in, uh, in Canada. And the, the, the proof of this is half of, not half, but the big part of the population speaks French, right? right? Um, so... New Brunswick. In 1803, the United States bought Louisiana from France, doubling the size of the country. Now let's jump ahead to the War of 1812. Most Canadians today know all about the War of 1812 and love to point out how this was the war when the British forces burnt down the White House. Most Americans barely know anything about the War of 1812, so hey, Americans, uh, why don't you educate yourselves on it, okay? Mr. Betts has right. just released a video about it over on his new channel, Drawn of History. Go watch it right now and come back, or watch it later or something. I don't know. This is a collab. Yeah, this will be later, my friend, but I appreciate the, the advice. Collaboration, okay? Yes, we plan to release these videos. By the way, should, should I react to that? <laughs> at the same time. It's a conspiracy. Anyway, yeah, so the future Canadians and Americans battled it out in the War of 1812, but really, it was a draw. One thing for sure after that war... A draw? That's a lost in my books if I'm American. I'm sorry. If you lose to Canada, that's a lost. I'm joking, my can Canadian friends, but kind of not at the, at the same time. Things have been relatively peaceful between the two countries ever since. Well, there was the Oregon boundary dispute. As both the United Kingdom and the United States looked to continue expanding westward, both had signed mm. the Treaty of 1818 to settle boundary disputes and to jointly settle an Oregon country. However, as more and more American settlers came to Oregon by the 1840s, tensions got a little hot between the two. Fortunately, they resolved it with the Oregon Treaty, splitting up Oregon at the 49th parallel so that the United Kingdom got the northern half and the United States got the southern half. That 49th okay. parallel today makes up much of the border between the United States and Canada. I guess later there was also a dispute between Alaska and the United Kingdom as well. Once gold was discovered in the Yukon, but that was settled relatively easily. Back to the 1840s. Oh, so they, okay, see, money really moves people. They found gold, today. all of a sudden they, they went to Alaska. The United States annexed the Republic of Texas, eventually leading to a war with Mexico, which the U. So, my friends, another pause. I know, I know, I know. But <laughs> the thing is, this is actually one of the things you guys have been requesting quite a lot for me to react to the Mexican American War. But um, maybe my research was not the best. I ended up not finding a great video on YouTube. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions, feel, feel free to, to leave me. You, you cannot leave the link because YouTube will uh, um, remove it, but uh, leave the, the name of the video and, and I will search. United States won and then got the northern half of Mexico due to uh, winning that war. A few years later, it got its modern contiguous borders after the Gadsden Purchase. During the American Civil War, future Canada officially stayed neutral, although tens of thousands of men from future Canada enlisted to help the Union forces. Most from future Canada, after all, were against slavery by this time. It's and future good. Canada had long been a final destination for runaway slaves through the Underground Railroad. The British had gotten rid of slavery back in 1834. Anyway, a couple years after the Union was preserved and the 13th Amendment ended slavery in the United States, Canada actually became a country. Well, okay. kind of. 
Mostly. Kinda. They were a dominion, still technically part of the British Empire, but self-governing. Today, Canada Day is kind of like the 4th of July or Independence Day in the States. Canadians celebrated on the anniversary of the Canadian Confederation being established on July 1st, 1867, in which the three colonies of Canada, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick united. So here is how Canada looked at the time. But over the following decades, it expanded dramatically and the United States tried to expand overseas. After getting Alaska, it aggressively found itself trying to gain a bunch of islands who mostly were not too happy being taken over. Kind of like all those native... I mean, yeah, but... <laughs> it is what it is, my friend. Americans who had their lands stolen over the previous two centuries. Canadians generally did not treat indigenous peoples much better as they expanded. Both countries discriminated against people of color and segregation was the norm into the first half of the 1900s. Most reforms in both countries during that time, such as women finally getting the right to vote, followed a similar pattern during that time. Canada and the United States were close allies during both the world World Wars. While the United Kingdom put Canada with full equal standing with it in 1931, most Americans have no idea that Canada didn't truly become a completely independent country until 1982. Oh, wow, that's fairly recently, actually. Okay, uh, okay, I love this video because, look, I feel like I'm not even pausing that much today. Okay, maybe I am. But... Uh, I like I, I I'm liking this video because I'm learning really a lot and uh, that's great. After it adopted its own constitution. After World War II, both countries went through very prosperous times and continued to follow similar paths with reforms. However, Canada went a bit further with its government programs and has been more left-leaning, and this trend continues to this day. Canada also mm. seems to have gone in a more progressive direction earlier. For example, it legalized same-sex marriage 10 years before the United States. Today, many of the the differences between Canada and the United States are linked to the fact that Canada stayed loyal to Britain for many years after the United States became a country, after breaking away from Great Britain. Most Americans love Canada. Less Canadians adore the United States, but still, they get along. Really? Okay. I also have this idea that Americans like Canadians, but I thought it was mutual, you know? <laughs> I guess maybe not so freaking well the united states has more people a lot more people in fact it has jesus the difference is so big look at that canada is bigger but oh no this is fantastic no chance right i'm um, actually there is a chance because this is a fact but <laughs> you guys got the point okay I mean, that's why they, they cannot compete with America. This is just too different. Has nine times as many people and has the third largest population in the world. California has more people than Canada. Remember. It's crazy. <laughs> Canada is slightly bigger in size yeah. and is the second largest country in the world by area, followed only by Russia. However, most of this area has few residents due to it being oh so very, very cold. 90% of... I mean, honestly, who ended up splitting <laughs> both countries was really smart on, on the United States side. Canadians actually live within 100 miles of the U.S. border. Oh, uh, and yeah, let's okay. look at the climate more closely. Canada is perhaps obviously colder being further north, even if you include comparing it to Alaska. Most of Canada's climate zones are affected by very cold air from the Arctic region. There are exceptions. Along the southwestern coast of Canada, there is mostly an oceanic climate. Much of southern Canada... Ooh, I bet a lot of people live there. Canada has various types of continental or arid climates. However, the vast majority of Canada is subarctic and much. Wait, is this a real photo? <laughs> it's crazy. 
Chivitz is also <laughs> tundra. The furthest northern areas of Canada are even permanently under ice. The United mm. States is obviously warmer overall, but basically has every climate zone imaginable. From the rainforests of Hawaii to the tundra of Alaska, from the humid subtropical climate of most of the south and part of the Midwest, to the deserts of the western portions of the country. Heck, you'll even... Man, I love America. I'm sorry. <laughs> not, I'm not, I should not even apologize but I love the fact that the country is so diverse and you can find a bit of everything. That, that's a perfect country to, to, to live. You can see several different climate types within one state. The wettest parts of the country get as much as 275 inches of precipitation each year. On the mm. other hand, Death Valley, which is often not only the driest but hottest place in the country, barely gets more than two inches of precipitation each year. Canada has just as crazy of difference. The driest parts of the country up in Nunavut get just over three inches of rain each year and Henderson Lake on Vancouver Island gets more than 287 inches each year. It gets more rainfall than any other place in North America. There are 50 states in the United States and also a federal district, five self-governing territories, and several other random island possessions. Canada has 10 provinces and three territories. The Okay, actually, let's let's learn about that because I know the the fifty states, as you can imagine, but about Canada, I know li uh, zero. So Ontario, I'm aware. Quebec, I'm also aware. Uh, Alberta, I believe, I'm also aware, but the others, you know. Okay, so ten pro. But what are the regions? Is those colors the greens, the orange, and the blues, grays? Are the three territories? Canada has 10 provinces and three territories. The life expectancy is higher in Canada. Related. That's good. <laughs> to this, Canada has universal health care. The United States does not. Yeah, politically, the United States is more conservative on most issues. The median age is higher in Canada. Canada has two official languages. Wait, 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 wait. This part is super interesting to me. I'm sorry if I'm... I actually... Let's run it back all of this. Canada has 10 provinces and three territories. Okay. The life expectancy is higher in Canada. Related... Okay. One zero for Canada. Related to this, Canada has universal health care. The... Two zero, my friend. I mean, I, I know this is very debatable, but I also live in a country that have universal health care and I kind of like it. United States does not. Yeah, politically, the United States is more conservative on most issues. The median age is higher. Okay, and you see, this is much better on, on America. So, population are quite older. Portuguese population is very old, by the way. I believe the new... I, could, I don't want to say fake news, but I believe the new updated uh, stat is 30, 47 years old. It's crazy. I believe only... it. Italy is an older population you know, in Europe than Portugal. In Canada, Canada has two official languages, English and French. The majority of Quebec residents speak French as a first language. The mm. United States has no official language, but the two most common languages are English and... Wait, what? The United States have no official language? I don't believe it. Wait, what about English? Okay, this is a crazy video. <laughs> and Spanish. The poverty rate is higher. Spanish, but the, I thought Spanish was more like in places like Florida. Uh, maybe Texas because of the Mexican influence, right? But what what I know, to be honest, but uh, let's run it back again. <laughs> this was interesting. Which is our English and Spanish. By the way, my friend, I hope you, I mean, let's be real. We are 22 minutes. No one is watching. I'm speaking alone on my house in Portugal. Can we be real with that? Probably. But if you are watching, <laughs> I hope there is a couple of you guys. Leave a comment, leave a like. It is always important to me to know that I, I'm not speaking alone. And the, the reason I say this is I can see my YouTube stats and most people watch the first five minutes, maybe 10 minutes if the video is really good. More than that is really rare. The poverty rate is higher in the United States, although Canadians measure their poverty. 
Ok, this uh, kind of makes sense since they are a bit more left, but I bet there is a lot more rich people in America rates differently so perhaps that is misleading the united states also has worse debt as a percentage of gdp however the me Dude, what so perhaps that is misleading the united states also has worse debt as wait am i crazy or this number is scary 98.2 percent debt not not saying this is great 89 percent but, oh boy, this can be problematic in the future. As a percentage of GDP, however, the median household income is higher in the United States. Football, or American football, that is, is the most popular sport in the United States, whereas ice hockey is the most popular sport in Canada. May Actually, I find the hockey a fun sport to, to watch, but I, I like American football more. Major League Baseball and the National Basketball League both have 29 American teams and one Canadian team. Mm. Those Canadian teams in both leagues are based in Toronto, which indeed is a city that feels like it actually could be in the I like the fact that you guys let them play. United States. The cost of living is generally higher in the United States. At the time of this recording, one Canadian dollar was worth about 76 cents, meaning Americans visiting Canada get more of a better deal. Normally, there is lots of movement going back and forth between the countries, but less so, obviously, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Speaking of the pandemic, Canada has fared with it better than the United States. Canadians are generally less religious. For those who are religious, can I? Okay, they did better with COVID, but they are less religious. Not sure where is the connection there, but uh, uh, okay. More identify as Roman Catholic, whereas in the United States, more identify as Evangelical Protestant. Hey. I actually this. Um, by the way, I, I respect all religions, and um, I, I follow Christianity, but I. I to, to be honest, I, I, I grew up in a Catholic home, but, so um, but I'm not sure if I identify with that any, uh, anymore. I, I believe this is a journey you have to do alone. But uh, this surprised me. I thought in America, Catholic, uh, the Catholic religion was the, the biggest one, but I guess Protestants, specific Evangelica, are doing ve very well. Um, that's interesting. Religious, more identify as Roman Catholic, whereas in the United States, more identify as Evangelical Protestant. A higher percentage of Canadians have college degrees, although the United States is known for having some of the best colleges in the world. And mm. yeah, Canada spends more on education. Despite agriculture being much more of a big deal in the United States, more Americans live in urban areas. Sure, almost 80% of Canadians live in urban areas, but 80 percent of the entire country is uninhabited most of canada it's a is crazy stat 80 percent wow is straight up wilderness and it has more wilderness than any other country other than russia just about 18 percent of the united states is wilderness major industry Wait, sorry. 18. other than russia just about 18 okay Still a big number, right? But uh, compared with Canada, that's nothing. 15% of the United States is wilderness. Major okay. industries in Canada include mining, healthcare, manufacturing, and transportation. Major industries in the United States also include healthcare and manufacturing, but additionally, technology and retail. According to the World Happiness Report, Canadians are happier than Americans. Canada is known for Tim Hortons. The United States is known for or Dunkin Donuts. What is Tim Hortons? and Starbucks. Well, dang, while we're at it, the United States is known for so many freaking brands. Three of the five. You can say whatever you want about America, but America runs the world in terms of influence. I mean, all of those brands are so popular in my country. I don't even know the brand end up sharing that about Canada biggest companies in the world, Walmart, Amazon, and Apple, are all based there. Probably the most well-recognized symbol of the United States is the bald eagle. Yeah. The most well-recognized symbol of Canada, the maple leaf. It's even on
I, I don't want to make jokes about someone's flag, but a leaf. The flag. The American flag has 13 stripes that represent the original 13 colonies and 50 stars that represent the 50 states of the Union. The United States has a much bigger military. In fact, it easily has the largest military in the world. No other country even comes close. Not close. Marijuana is completely legal in Canada, but in some American states mm, it's... That's why they are a bit more happy than Americans. Got it still illegal. Canada has less violent crime. The United States has a higher percentage of its own citizens in prison than any other country in the world. That said, the United States is generally a more free place. One example of this is censorship. Perhaps due to Americans placing a high value on freedom of speech, you just hear and see more provocative and controversial stuff there. How about Canadian content, eh? The Canadian government actually requires that radio and TV broadcasters, including cable and satellite channels, have to broadcast at least a certain percentage of content that was at least partially created or presented by Canadian residents. Fortunately for Canada, lots of great music comes out of the country considering how much fewer folks live there. But yeah, American culture is more influential on the world. Different Throughout level. history, as the United States dominated mass media, it also spread its culture around the world through music, movies, TV shows, video games, and social media. There are two major reasons for this. One, a spirit of innovation throughout American history, and two, just having a huge domestic market. With the majority of Americans speaking English, they have also had access to a worldwide market of more than 2 billion English speakers. The United it's a great point also. The United States is more nationalistic. If you tell a Canadian about the Pledge of Allegiance, many of them would be a bit confused, to say the least. Canada stopped making pennies. The United States still does for some reason? Canadians generally do know a lot more about the United States than Americans know about Canada. Americans... I mean, don't want to be rude, but uh, Americans do not need to know about Canada. I bet Canadians need to know more about America. Party harder. I have no scientific... And by the way, before there is some Canadian guy getting mad at me, I actually like Canada quite a lot evidence to back this up, but it's probably true. Okay, let's try to wrap this up. Overall, most of the differences between the two are subtle, like... Canadians apparently call these pencil crowns, but Americans call them colored pencils, and Canadians call these washrooms, and Americans call them bathrooms or restrooms. But honestly, folks like J.J. McCullough argue those differences are overrated. Because both countries are so dang big, and because there are so many regional differences, it's been really difficult making this video, since many of these generalizations are misleading. Undoubtedly, the United okay. States remains a superpower in the world. World, and Canada is often in its shadow. However, both continue to thrive and really do depend on each other. And yeah, they really are two of my favorite countries. I mean, no surprise, Me right? Wait, uh, Mr. Beat, Mr. Mr. Beat is Canadian. Full disclosure: I am an American. In case you hadn't figured it out by now. <laughs> but I've been to Canada multiple times and I really love it up there. I did also have a Canadian friend who really loves the United States read over the script. That'd be the mm. amazing JJ McCullough. Thank you, JJ, for reading over the script. Also, in the summer of 2019, I totally predicted I would make this video eventually, man. And so I asked one of my other Canadian friends, Tristan from Step Back History, to give me his thoughts about the similarities and differences between Canada and the United States. Canada has a lot of this uh, patriotic feeling inside because in many ways, the example of the United States uh, is really the way that Canada has developed its own identity. So we develop these kind of ideas of how can we be not American? And so we try to find our own ways to do uh, interesting things while being, let's be honest, more or less exactly the same in a lot of cases, but yeah. Uh, the majority of my regular viewers are from one of these two countries, and so I know you have 
Lots more to add in the comments, so comment away. Also, don't forget to check out my friend Mr. Betts' video about the War of 1812 over on his new channel, Drawn of History. Yeah, it's a new channel, but it's already one of the best history channels on YouTube, period. Check it out and subscribe, I'm telling you. And finally, here's my monthly shout out to all my Patreon supporters who donate at Great least video. 10 bucks or more each month to the channel, beginning with my biggest donors. Matt Standish. Okay, I guess we can skip this part, but a uh, great video. Um, I end up learning a lot, honestly. <laughs> this is the type of videos I love, love to react. The thing is, I'm never sure if they, they are a bit long and um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I also know that you guys like funny videos. This is not super funny, but I think it's great, great stuff to, to watch. Uh, but you guys tell me in the comments. And if you don't even want to comment, leaving a like sometimes is more than, uh, than enough. Also consider to subscribe if you are new to my channel. Check all the videos I did here. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye, my friend.